Drake makes headlines every time he drops a project, but his newest album, For All The Dogs, has people going crazy over all the shots he took. From Rihanna to Kanye, we're breaking down everyone he dissed on the album. A few hours before For All The Dogs dropped, Drake released the track 8AM in Charlotte and took a shot at one of the most savage rappers in the game. A couple of years ago, Drake and NBA Youngboy were supposed to drop a collab together, but it never came out. Then Drake linked up with Youngboy's biggest op, Lil Durk, and there's been static between them ever since. Youngboy's issues with Durk are way deeper than rap, so Drake rocking with him was a big deal. Youngboy aired him out over the situation on the track Fuck The Industry Part 2 and rapped, Talked to Drake cross FaceTime, he wasn't feeling me. Told me that he fuck with Dirk, damn, that shit getting to me. Told me that he liked the shit I'm doing, but can't do shit with me. So when we cross our ways, fuck what you say, bitch you my enemy. Drake didn't call him out by name, but he sent a clear shot at Youngboy on 8am in Charlotte when he rapped, You Youngboy, take some of that money and set it aside. Not having enough to pay your tax is a federal crime. You niggas obsessed with me, and it's not a no hetero vibe. Handle beef so quiet, you think that I'm letting it slide. The same day the track came out, YB hopped on Instagram and wrote, Try again, bitch ass nigga, and, and stop sucking that boy dick. He know I'm gonna cutthroat the fuck out. Record my dick, nigga, you a hoe. Youngboy also dissed J. Cole on Fuck The Industry Part 2. They were supposed to link up in the studio, but Youngboy never showed up and left Cole waiting on him. They never made a track together, but Youngboy rapped, J a ho, that nigga played it cold like he was gonna do a feature. So I texted his line to Muscle Sign, I swear it's gonna be nice to meet you. Then a couple of weeks ago, rumors were flying that Cole clapped back when he hopped on Lil Yachty's song, The Secret Recipe, and rapped, niggas making threats and I laugh, that's cause you ain't a threat. Don't ask how I feel about no rappers, shit, they okay I guess. Incoming call, press the button, the one that says accept. He FaceTimed to ask for a feature and saw the face of death. Drake sent a shot at Youngboy and for all the dogs, but when J. Cole spit a verse on the track, first person shooter, he made it clear that he doesn't have any issues with Youngboy and said, Niggas so thirsty to put me in beat, dissected my words and start looking too deep. I look at the tweets and start sucking my teeth. I'm letting it rock cause I love the mystique. I still wanna give me a song with YB. Can't trust everything that you saw on IG. Just know if I diss you, I'd make sure you know that I hit you like I'm on your caller ID. Drake's beef with Youngboy is new, but he also sent shots at some old ops on the track. His history with Kanye West is long and complicated, but Drake made it clear they're never gonna be cool when he said, diss me so long ago, we making your memories fly. Conspiracy theories floating around like the Kennedy guy. I'll probably hold a grudge against you guys till I'm 75. For the last couple of years, Ye has been burning bridges with his old friends and hanging out with weird conservative dudes, and Drake dissed him over it with the line, you forced a lot of fake love when real ones stood in your face. That's why you got deserted by your niggas like pudding and cake. Then Drake brought up some alleged footage he has of Kanye that he's been talking about for years. Back when Pusha T and Drake were going to war, rumors were flying that Drake had some career ending shots ready to throw at Kanye. But Jay Prince stepped in and told him not to release it because it was going too far. When Jay Prince sets back down, people listen. Drake is one of the biggest stars in the world and he still held back when Prince told him to, even though he was getting destroyed by Pusha and their beef. Nobody knows what Drake actually has on Ye that could be so crazy, but he talks about it again on the new project and raps, I got you on camera bowing down, but the footage is safe. Thank God, another USB to put in the safe. Thank God, at the crib, dipping my foot in the lake. I swear that y'all turned me into the villain. I couldn't escape. Drake also allegedly took some new shots at Pusha too. A few days before the album dropped, Pusha hopped on Twitter to complain about having a sitting coach on his flight after he paid for a first class ticket. Then in the middle of his track with 21 Savage, Drake put in a skit where a woman was complaining about having to sit in the economy even though there were first class seats available. And on the next track, Fear of Heights, Drake took a more direct shot and rapped, you niggas some pussy for real. You niggas some sissy for real. Virginia, I pull up and chill. You know you can't come where I stay. This line actually has two disses at once. Pusha's wife's name is Virginia Williams, so Drake is basically saying he can pull up and chill with his girl whenever he wants. Pusha T's also from Virginia, and Drake claims he can go there without any issues even though it's op territory. And at the end of the bar, he makes it clear that it's not safe for Pusha to come to Toronto. Drake gets clowned a lot for rapping about the streets and not really being from him. But at the same time, he has real ties to Wasp Gang, which is one of the most brutal crews in the city. Drake never really stopped sending shots at Pusha even though the beef pulled down. Last year, he allegedly sent a subliminal on Jack Harlow's track Churchill Downs when he rapped, Praying on my downfall don't make you religious, man. All I hear is plug talk coming from middlemen. All I hear is tall tales coming from little men. Now it looks like Drake is ready to spark the situation back up for real though. Drake name dropped Pusha's wife before on the track W Freestyle and rapped, I told you keep playing with my name and I'ma let it ring on you like Virginia Williams. That line is the main reason Pusha ever responded back in the day, so bringing her back into the beef is probably gonna cause all kinds of drama. 
It wouldn't be a Drake album without relationship drama though, and everyone was shocked by these next shots he threw. Drake and Rihanna have known each other since 2005. There have been all kinds of rumors about them dating each other over the years, but their relationship is crazy complicated. They were allegedly spotted kissing at a bowling alley back in the day, but then a few months later, Drake told the New York Times that she used him like a pawn and ghosted him. Fans were surprised when they linked up for the track What's My Name a few months after that, and rumors about them dating sparked right back up. In 2013, Drake told Ellen that they had their moment and he'll always support Rihanna. Uh, yeah, great, great girl. We 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 had our, our moment, and you know, I mean, um, always always support and, and have love for her. But in 2015, she said that the last person she dated was Chris Brown. Nobody knows what was going down behind the scenes, but in 2018, Rihanna told Vogue that they weren't even on speaking terms anymore. They had mentioned shark tattoos before that, but Rihanna got hers covered up. And in 2019, she said she wouldn't be working with Drake anytime soon. The situation's been quiet for a while, which is why fans were shocked when Drake aired her out on the first track of the new project. On the song Virginia Beach, he raps, I know what you say, you say I could've treated you better or whatever, but I don't know, I think I did alright, know what I'm saying? And you know how you get, drawing conclusions like you got a Parsons degree or something, I could've treated you better, that's crazy. Back in 2017, Rihanna was given an honorary degree from Parsons School of Design, so everyone knew from the jump that Drake was talking about her. That wasn't the only shot he took at her though, a lot of fans think Drake's dissing Rihanna now because of her new relationship with ASAP Rocky. Rocky and Drake were cool back in the day and linked up for the track fucking problems, but it looks like Rocky getting with Rihanna is causing some issues, and on the track Fear of Heights, Drake said, Why they make it sound like I'm still hung up on you? That could never be. Gal can't run me, better him than me. People have been clowning Drake for his obsession with Rihanna for years, so this line was probably about her, but he made it even more obvious with the next one. Rihanna's last album was called Anti, and Drake raps, I'm anti, I'm anti, yeah, and the sex was average with you, yeah, I'm anti cause I had it with you, okay, I'm anti like your daddy's sister, anti like a family picture, and I had way better bitches than you, tbh. Yeah, that man, he's still with you. He can't leave you. Y'all go on vacation? I bet it's Antigua. Then on the track, Another Late Night, Drake allegedly took a shot at Rocky when he raps, I ain't pretty flacco, bitch, this shit get really rocky. This and Rihanna and Rocky surprised a lot of people, but that's not the only grudge Drake aired out on the record. Back in 2011, a jazz artist named Esperanza Spalding beat Drake at the Grammys to win Best New Artist. He's been pressed about it ever since. And on the track Away From Home, he rapped, Four Grammys to my name, 100 nominations. Esperanza Spalding was getting all the praises. Then on the next line, Drake sent a shot at Kendrick Lamar. Last month, Kendrick's original verse from his track Element leaks, where he said, Drake, your Meek Mill beef might get you gassed up, but I'm a whole nother beast. I'd really fuck you up. Kendrick gets all kinds of praise in the industry, and Michelle Obama even put him on her official Spotify playlist. So everyone knew Drake was sending shots when he rapped. I'm trying to keep it humble, I'm trying to keep it gracious. Who give a fuck Michelle Obama put you on her playlist? Then we never hear from you again like you was taken. Kendrick and Drake's beef will probably never pop off for real, but Drake also aired out a situation where people think he put out a hit on one of the hottest rappers in the game. XXX Tentacion popped off back in 2016 with the track Look At Me, and a few months later, Drake allegedly jacked his flow for his song KMT. X was pressed about the situation and said that Drake's career was almost over, then took it even farther and said, Drake's mom kinda cute, she could get it on IG Live. X later apologized for taking shots at Drake's mom. So I apologize for disrespecting your mom, I apologize for coming at you, talking about you crazy and talking about you crazy and threatening you and shit, and I apologize. As a man to a man, I apologize. But then he hopped on IG Live and said if anyone tried to kill him, it was Drake. Later, X said he was hacked and deleted the post. But then Drake dropped the track, I'm upset, and rapped. SMS, triple X, that's the only time I ever shoot below the neck. Why you keep on shooting if you know that nigga dead? That's the only kind of shit that gets you some respect. X was tragically killed a couple of months later over a Louis bag and some cash. Drake allegedly sent more shots on the track Mob Ties when he said, GLE, cause that Lambo moving fast. S class, G class, lot of class. In a rocket and that bitch ain't got no tags. Louis bags in exchange for body bags, yeah. All the distance sparked some crazy rumors that Drake put a bag on X's head and got him killed. And on his new track Daylight, he aired the situation out and rapped, I wasn't there when they caught the body. TBS think that I bought the body. Internet swear that I bought the body. Take more than that to go pop somebody. The XXX Tentacion situation was deadly serious, but Drake had taken petty shots too. Back in August, Team Canada was asked to choose their favorite Canadian between Drake and Ryan Reynolds. Everyone on the team picked Drake except for Dylan Brooks, so Drake clapped back on another late night and said, Hey, 
thinking about this pill I took? Pillow talking. Shawty rinsing Dylan Brooks. Can't believe this nigga talking. Damn. Dylan Brooks probably won't respond on record, but the next artist Drake diss might end up clapping back. Drake and The Weeknd linked up before The Weeknd ever became a superstar. Drake helped get a lot of eyes on him. And back in the day, everyone thought he was going to sign the Drake's OVO label. The Weeknd ended up going with Republic Records instead though, and that's where the issues allegedly started. After the news broke, Drake tweeted, You won't get away with just a thank you. You owe me a favor. They kept working together for a few years and even teased a collab project in 2017. But then Drake allegedly hooked up with The Weeknd's ex, Bella Hadid, and everything went downhill. A couple years later, the Weeknd allegedly took a shot at Drake on the track Lost in the Fire when he said, And I just want a baby with the right one, cause I would never be the one to hide one. Everyone connected the line to Drake because he tried to hide his son before Pusha T aired him out for it. It looked like the beef was about to get real, but a few months later, Drake dropped the track War and Rap, and the boy that sounded like he sang on Thriller, you know that's been my nigga. Yeah, we just had to fix things, family six things, we can't split up. For a while, everything seemed cool, but something might be going on behind the scenes because on his new track, All the Parties, Drake said, my bitch is playing P and D in there, them shorties don't listen to Weekend. Nobody knows why Drake is airing out his old homie now, but more will probably come out soon. Drake name dropped a lot of famous people on the record, but he also took shots at random people online who have been calling him over his friendship with Millie Bobby Brown. Back in 2018, Brown said that Drake and her were friends and he even gave her advice about boys. A lot of people thought the situation was weird since she was 14 at the time and Drake was in his 30s. But Brown clapped back at everyone trying to make a lovely relationship your headline. And on another late night, Drake raps, weirdos in my comments talking about some Millie Bobby. Look, bring them jokes up to the gang, we get to really flock it. Or send a finger to your mama in some FedEx boxes. Open up that shit, it's jaw dropping. Really shocking. All of the shots Drake took on the album are probably gonna spark even more drama later on, but he's already beefing with Joe Budden over the project. Their issues go all the way back to 2016 when Budden didn't like Drake's album views and said he sounded uninspired. Drake allegedly clapped back with a couple of subliminal shots, then Budden came out of retirement and responded with the track Making the Murderer Part 1 and rapped, but now my phone blowing up. They're like, what I'm gonna do? Show the world you shouldn't poke a man with nothing to lose. All of this just because I wasn't in love with his views. Whatever happened, I just know they got me fucking confused. One of Budden's most famous tracks back in the day was called Pump It Up, and Drake used it to clown him when he hopped on French Montana's track No Shopping and rapped, pump, pump, pump it up. She got a good head on her, but I pump it up. I'm not a one hit wonder, they know all my stuff. You let me turn into the nigga that you almost was. They went back and forth on social media for a while, but in 2020 they linked up on IG and it seemed like the beef was dead. Nothing else went down since then, but now the beef is back and hotter than before. Button obviously wasn't feeling the new record, and he said on his podcast- I, I, I miss the Drake that was rapping but for the rappers. I miss the Drake that when he dropped, the rappers hit him. The clip ended up going viral, and Drake hopped online and sent some crazy shots at him. He tagged Button in the comments and called him a failure and the poster child of frustration and surrendering. It was a savage comment all the way through, and at the end he said, if you need to put in simpler terms, I own a 767. He owns a modest house in the 973 and flies first class on special occasions. 